Do you want the new you, but you're stuck in the old you? Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Pantry Podcast. Remember, like, subscribe, share, comment, all the fun stuff that helps us get out to more people and connect better with you. This week... There is beautiful snow on the ground. Let it snow. Let it snow. It's almost like let all things snow. are new. <laughs> all things are new and fresh outside. But are you feeling new and fresh in this new year? This this always reminds me of the verse that talks about our scarlet, you know, covering our the, the, our, our sins are our, our sins being scarlet. covered. Oh yeah, our sins are scarlet and becoming white as snow in Jesus yeah. Christ. And I kind of sit there sometimes. I think that we live in the scarlet. <laughs> We, yeah. we forget that we've been cleansed, we're as white as new, that we're supposed to become this example. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how many conversations I get into where people are like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, do the right thing. <laughs> right? Yes. And it, it usually conversations of conflict are usually conversations that maybe got a little strained. Yeah. And, and people are constantly asking, what do I do? Yeah. How do I actually walk in this uh, I guess a theological term would be the new man, if you don't know what that means. <laughs> it just means you're a new creation, right? So even if you're a female, you don't need to worry. It's talking about you too. But it's this idea that you are new in Christ. You are new wine, and now it's time to make sure you're in a new wine skin and live in that new wine skin because the old wine skin will explode. Right. And I don't know how many times I've pulled up Philippians. Mm-hmm. Or no, Ephesians. I'm sorry. Where, where am I? <laughs> Ephesians 4, right? That's my fault because I was telling you. I know. Like, like, we, we sat there yeah. and I said, was it Philippians or Ephesians? Philippians. Philippians. Anyway, anyway but, but the point is yeah. how many times I've pulled up this verse in mm-hmm. like probably the last couple months. Right. Um, uh, Ephesians 4. And, and of course, it's it's titled in the Bible. Depends on what Bible you have. It's going to say the new man. Mm-hmm. But I really like the first verse, how it jumps out. It's like, it's like, therefore, testify <laughs> in the Lord. Look, so our lives become this testimony. Mm-hmm. And when we're responding to people, when people when we're there's like a little maybe a disagreement or maybe there's a feeling that's hurt. Mm-hmm. How are we responding? Are we responding by testifying and glorifying God's name? Or are we testifying our feelings? And I think that when we start to unpack this logically, when we have time to stop, right? Right. Because I mean, in the moment, eh, yeah, <laughs> we are never. Well, I won't say never. Sometimes we're one hundred percent grace filled, mercy filled, yeah. and forgiving. Yeah. Normally, when we're well slept and have no debt. <laughs> And you just ate, so you don't need a Snickers, and you look good. It's a good hair day, and no one's cut you off on the on the road today. Then you have all this grace. <laughs> <laughs> right. But that's like the perfect day, right? <laughs> it is. And in that verse, Paul turns around. In that, right? Yeah. And he says, "Look, stop being a Gentile." Ooh, mm-hmm. those words are like hardcore when it comes to the christian life yeah because it's no we are no longer gentiles in other words we no longer reason or think Mm -hmm. or we shouldn't hold on let me let me let me rephrase this because boy i still struggle (laughs) (laughs) i still struggle in fact i struggled yesterday but it's okay but watch this when you come back to the conversation how are you coming back to that conversation Mm -hmm. are you coming back in that newness, mm-hmm. right? In that as white as snowness, mm-hmm. or are you coming back for blood? Right. Right. And so when I sit there and I look at this and I start to read through this all the way to the end of the chapter, pretty much, right? It just kind of starts to describe. Now, a lot of that is in there talking about, you know, don't be like a Gentile. But I think that sometimes when we unpack this and look at this, even within our conversations in my own household, yeah, right? I have to stop thinking like a Gentile. Yeah. And I have to start thinking like Christ. Right. I like in if everyone that's listening has a chance to go to Ephesians four, we're going to be in verse 17 for a second. With the Lord's authority, I say this live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. (laughs) So that's one thing for me, like when I'm thinking like the old me, when I'm really caught up in myself, my fears, my hang ups, my desires, all of that. It kind of makes me think to this verse very recently, but I've recently last year camped out in the New Testament for a while. And so when I when I start getting stuck and I feel kind of paralyzed, I'm like I'm hopelessly confused. Like I'm forgetting the truth Mm. that 
I've been given. I'm forgetting the promises that aren't out there accessible to me. Like I could say, hey, God, I want that promise too. No, no, no. They've already been given to me. And so maybe they haven't taken full bloom in my life yet, but there's there could be reasons for that, right? That are my fault, but also just that hope and expectation that they are on their way could also change my mentality. And so when I'm looking at who this new woman is, this new man, this new creation inside of me, you know, sometimes it's because I'm forgetting the truth. I'm not actually sitting and marinating mm -hmm. in the truth. And so it's going to be tough. And it makes me think of, of chicken, white meat chicken. <laughs> I did not eat white meat chicken because it was always dry until Shay said, hey, if you marinate it in salt water or soy sauce water, it will s retain its 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 juiciness when you cook it. And that's what I think about the truth. Like we can be pliable and juicy and flavorful. Like life can be that way if we marinate ourselves in the salt of truth. Mm. But if we don't do that, we get tough and hard and unpliable and, and it's harder to exist. Mm. That's, that's, that's actually a cool analogy because if I do the soy, I do a soy sauce, by the way, y'all, <laughs> Pour soy sauce on your chicken, right? Cover it like you're like, if, like, oh, this is how I'm gonna eat it, and then put water on top of that. And if you only let it marinate for a couple hours, you're not gonna see m much benefit. You'll see a little bit, but not much. Mm -hmm. But if I let that thing marinate 24 hours, yeah, man, you could cook that thing to being done, mm -hmm. and it's still you cut into it, and like juices flow out of it. And that is what you're talking about. You're talking about like sitting in the word mm -hmm. and letting those juices flow out, yes. Right. Because that is where we start to impact our environment. Mm -hmm. It's amazing when you can sit <laughs> when it does work right. Right. When it does work right. And you're in like maybe there's a turmoil or a conflict or there's mm -hmm. uh, a disagreement or you're trying to come to terms. Yeah. And you become, I don't want to say this, the bigger one the bigger person. We have kind of touched this in another episode somewhere, but mm -hmm. becoming the one the, reflecting Christ more. Yeah. And, and, and <laughs> there we go. The, the bigger person, the one that the, look doing what God has told right. you to do. Right. Um, when you look at verse 18, right? It says having their understanding darkened, being alienated from life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. He's telling us we have been awakened to something different that we don't have to live this way. In other words, people who don't have Jesus are still living in this mentality. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They got good morals. Yeah. They got this, but they still got the lustful pleasure. Right. And every kind of impurity mm. that they eagerly practice. Right. And it, then it goes on to say, and you have not learned Christ because you're living in this way. You're letting these emotions, these feelings drive you instead of centering yourself. I have a brother right now that's going through a lot. And amazing, amazing that, you know, like I know the old brother and I know the new brother, <laughs> right? So you kind of, you, you always yeah. have this baseline yeah. and you see like how it was and how, how it is mm -hmm. and how, when we center and marinate, how the situation changes right. and you see growth and you see maturity and you see mm -hmm. wisdom and you see faith mm -hmm. that God is going to handle this. Yeah. And my new word, what is it? What's my new word? Come on. Trust in God, right? Oh. Trust in God. What is it? Zabia de Elohim. Ah, yeah. Zabia de Elo Elohim. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so that's my new word. Look. Your new phrase. Your my new, new phrase. phrase. My new phrase. Yeah. Trust, tr tr trust in God, right? It's I think that's, all I think in his hands. All in his hands. Yeah, put, put it all in his hands yeah. or something. Yeah. It, it's it's <laughs> Hebrew. Like, he needs uh, to work no, on this. But it's he like, no, 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 I got to iron this out still. Look, I'm still working on iron out. But watch. It just means, look, I am trusting and putting my life and everything in God's hands. I'm so, so someone out there that speaks Hebrew is like, dude, come on, get it right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. So look, watch, right there. Practice what we're talking about. <laughs> give yep. me some grace. Give me some love. And watch. Text me, email me, and tell me how it's what it really says. But the point behind this is as we carry on through Ephesians, right, we get to the meat because it talks about all this. You know, if you're angry or if you steal. Look, watch. If you steal. Do something better with your hands. Help people. Right. <laughs> right. But at the end of this, I like this. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification. I'm way down at 29. Mm -hmm. 
that it may impart grace to the hearers. And then, because mm, I want to get to this too, mm-hmm. real quick, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. In other words, when we don't live that life, right? when we don't open our hearts and our minds to this grace and this love and this mercy, love, the greatest thing, love. Watch it. My, I got a phone, that phone call, right? What do I do? Love on them. You're allowed to tell them why you maybe responded the way you did, but don't justify your response. Right. But allow them into a portion of you. And I, I think what it was was it was something about how they grew up and how they were raised. Right. Right. And, they, and it impacted their life in such a way that the, the, there was a harshness that came out in the response to something that was similar. Right. Okay, fine. But go back. How do I, how do I handle this? Go back in love. Go back so you're not quenched of the spirit in sin. Yeah. Don't let anger or, or your feelings go overnight. Mm-hmm. Give them to God and let that renew your mind so now you can proceed in a way that is righteous and edifying to God. Yeah, so I mean, like, what are we saying? We're saying that we want... <laughs> Look, what was all that that Shane just said? <laughs> Unpack it for me. Look, let the King James be now unpacked by the New Living Translation. <laughs> Dang. So, <laughs> no, like, so what? so what is all this, right? So we're talking about, okay, like, how do you live like this? It seems like, yet again, and this is like, I mean, we've been doing this for 200 episodes. We've been doing this for three years. It, the, the solution keeps coming back to, like, be in your Bible, y'all. Like, I don't even mm. care if you think it's boring. There's other boring stuff that you do. Right. There's boring stuff that you do that brings less benefit to your life than reading the Bible. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not saved if you find the Bible boring. Although there's some believers who are like, I have no idea how you could find the Bible boring. Sometimes it's not that you find the Bible boring because it's the Bible, but because of the way you think. And that's not an insult. That's just a fact. Mm. Like the way you think, the way you've learned to learn the way you've expected to be entertained, the things that you find fun, the way you sense and gauge and collect information, Mm. it might make it harder to grasp the point of the Bible. And there's several things you can do. One, you can pray and ask the Lord for wisdom because he always, it's always yes and amen to more wisdom. He will always give you more Mm. wisdom, right? But another thing that I realized is that, like, especially in life group, Sometimes our friends, they need it said plain. Sometimes they need it like they have so many questions that they need a more in-depth answer that doesn't overwhelm them. For the other person, it does overwhelm them to get the deeper answer. So sometimes it's better to ask privately, right, if you need that depth, right? Um, But one thing that I really noticed is that some of our friends, they've been reading the Bible, right? They've successfully read the entire thing in chronological order, and they didn't get a lot from it. That doesn't mean they're not saved. I see them every day or I see them often. They're praying. They're desiring to be more like the Lord. But like the parables don't click for them. Right. Um, Even though the parables literally explain like they don't see how to apply it to their daily life. And so if you can come alongside that person or find someone who seems to understand the word of God Mm. a little more and they see like that person who's like, I apply it to my life. I get it right. Sit down with them. Have coffee with them. Go grocery shopping with them. Go on a ride to get their car wash with them. Whatever to get in their life and pick their brain about how you apply the Bible to your daily life. Mm. You know, that's something huge. And that's something that I've kind of committed to doing for a few people this year. Because for me, I see, like, I'm obsessed with how it applies to my life. And I always have to remember to actually pray that God works on my heart (laughs) because knowing how it applies and actually your heart having the work done in it are two different things. Mm -hmm. But that's the final thing is that you can start asking the Lord to work in your heart so that your heart reflects more and more of him. The best way to do that, though, is to be in the word. Mm, Video game. I sit there sometimes Mm. and I play forever and I can't get past and achieve and unlock the next one. Right. (laughs) And then I go out to my phone and I'm like, how do I do this? And I watch that stinking YouTube video over because I look, I'm not that video gamer, so like I have to watch it like ten times to get through it. <laughs> but look, I watched it ten times and then I achieved exactly. and unlocked the next level. Exactly. So the only thing I have to say in all of this, yeah, the Bia de Elohim, <laughs> it's in God's hands. There you go. Amen. It's ironed in now. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that that is the big takeaway this Mm. week. And we're going to start covering a few things. Like, I think 
we've been talking about some of the misconceptions yeah. or, or faulty expectations when, when you're going to church for the first time, or maybe you've been going for like right. a decade and a half, right? But you've just never kind of actually thought about this answer. So this will help you if you're trying to, you know, encourage people to join you at church or better understand people that aren't. It'll also help you if you're considering going to church for the first time or, or coming back after a long time. So remember, you can support us at patreon.com slash thepantrypodcast. You can also go to thepantrypodcast.com to get our seven-day Jesus Not Junk Food devotional and get caught up on previous episodes. Bye. Bye.